This is Ken Boy with St. Louis Test Preparation. This is part two of our consolidations comprehensive problem. What we're going to do in this section is, first of all, talk about unrealized gains and losses on uh, both intercompany gains and losses, excuse me, on intercompany transactions. That's what this tab on the spreadsheet talks about. So, Again, ACME is the parent, XYZ is our sub. And what we do in these first couple of sections is talk about sales of inventory between parents and subs. And the idea is, in terms of getting income, net income correct, is that we need to eliminate profit on those intercompany transactions so they are not, the profit is not included when we consolidate. So, for example, Oh, and one more thing to remember before I go on is that it doesn't matter if it's an upstream or a downstream transaction, and we'll see upstream and downstream defined in a later video again, the elimination entry is the same. So it doesn't matter if parent sells to sub, which is a downstream, or sub sells to parent, which is an upstream. We eliminate the information in about the same way. So. Acme, our parent, sells good to XYZ. What we need to think about is not only what the sale price was and what the markup is, but how much of those goods remain at the end of the prior period, which is another way of saying how much of the goods from the intercompany sale remain at the beginning of the current period. So the period we're talking about happens to be during 2012. Acme sells goods to XYZ, and we have a situation where XYZ, the sub, sells goods to Acme. So we have information for both an upstream and a downstream transaction. We also have intercompany sales of inventory during 2013, same sort of setup. We've got information on sale price, what the markup was by the seller, which is the gross profit we need to eliminate, how much of the goods remain at the end of the year. And then finally, we have an intercompany sale of equipment. X, Y, Z, the, Z, the sub sells to the parent. Here's a sale price, a book value on the seller's books, X, Y, Z, and the number of years in the remaining life. So all that being said, we now have to take the data and group the unrealized, the uh, gross profit data into two sections. The first is, Opening inventory, that information from the beginning of the period, opening inventory, beginning inventory. So, Acme sells goods to XYZ. You may remember back up here, we had a sale price markup data here at the top. So, the during 2012 information is the opening inventory because we're looking at 2012 as the beginning period in 2013 is the ending. So the sale price multiplied by the amount remaining in inventory, you may be given a dollar amount remaining in inventory. This happens to be a percentage of the total sold. And the markup, in this case, we uh, calculated the markup by taking, if you scroll back up, there was a markup of 25%. So if I create a ratio of a 25% markup, divided by 125, 100% being the cost, 25% being the markup, I get a markup percentage of 20%. So in other words, if I have a 25 cent profit, a 25 cent markup, excuse me, I divide by $1.25 to get that markup as a percentage. So if I multiply across, I get the unrealized gross profit, which needs to be eliminated, $21,000, that's for parent sale to the sub. We have a sub sale to parent, and in this case, we're told the goods remaining in inventory in dollars, so we don't need to do this comp computation. We've already got the goods remaining in inventory. We multiply by the markup that we're given, and we get unrealized profit in the upstream sale, sub sale to parent. Unrealized profit, we add it up, and we get total unrealized profit in opening inventory, opening being 2012. Again, if you go back up to the top, 2012 is considered our, that's where we're calculating our opening period. 
ending inventory, that's going to be the data from 2013 right here. And again, we had parent to sub downstream. We had a sub to parent sale upstream. They both get eliminated. So again, sale price times percent remaining. In this case, we have to calculate the markup, the, the same 20%. We multiply across. We have a profit of 12000 that we need to eliminate on this downstream transaction parent to sub. Sub to parent upstream, sale price, percentage remaining in inventory. We're given the markup. We don't have to figure it out. I get an unrealized profit of 21600 I can add the two together to get the total unrealized profit and ending inventory. A general theme that you're seeing here is that I need to figure out the dollars that are in ending inventory, the, the dollar amount in ending inventory, figure out what the markup is on those items in ending inventory, and that's how I can figure out the profit that I need to eliminate. <coughs> Excuse me, then we have an equipment sale during 2013. Sub XYZ sells equipment to parent, that's an upstream. Sale price of 160. The book value on XYZ, the seller's books, 116. There's the unrealized gain. Now, we are going to amortize the unrealized gain just like we amortized fair value. If I go over here, we saw a situation where we amortized the fair value differential. In this case, we're amortizing this gain on sale that's in our company. So the annual amortization is the 44,000 gain divided by an 11 year useful life remaining for the equipment, 4,000 a year. It so happens that the we only need to calculate six months through the year. From June 30 to 1231, we take half of it. So our unrealized gain at the end of the year is the entire unrealized gain less the amount that we amortize in green and we get an unrealized gain of $42,000. Where this takes us next is to talk about consolidation of retained earnings. And we figure it out for 12-31-2012. We first of all look at the change in retained earnings since acquisition. Well, way back at the beginning, we had a retained earnings balance of $2,600,000 back here. If I go up to the top of the first question that we got when we first set up the question and bought and the Acme the sub bought the parent, there's the retained earnings in the equity section of XYZ's balance sheet, $2,600,000. That's where we start with. Where we end with is the beginning balance of retained earnings in that uh, income statement and retained earnings summary, $33,372,000. And that number comes from this 2013 income statement and statement of retained earnings, where we do a little reconciliation of retained earnings down here, and the beginning retained earnings amount for the sub, 1231-2013, is 3 million 372 right there. So it's a difference of $772,000. We then take the, we eliminate the profit for that upstream transaction, XYZ selling to parent. Profit and opening inventory. If I go to my unrealized gains and losses and I look for upstream transaction, Opening inventory, there's my upstream transaction, XYZ to Acme. Opening inventory, 13500 That's where I get that number. <coughs> and then we, uh, the next thing I will cover is the amortization of the fair value differentials. I'm going to continue that on the next video. And where we're going to end up is with a an entire calculation rolling forward retained earnings so we know where we retained earnings are on a consolidated basis. Remember that 
At the website, St. Louis Test Prep, STL Test, we have accounting video textbooks. You can see highlights of the textbooks here at the bottom in YouTube videos. You can download them here. You get the entire video course. You get Excel templates supporting the course. You get a practice exam in Excel and also a practice exam that's graded and explained in the video. And you can see the link. Links I am actually in the process of adding on to our advanced accounting video textbook and our accounting for investments textbook. Thanks very much for watching, and we'll see you next time.